from the Pixie Dust Studio in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Welcome to the I See Hope Empowering Positive Change Podcast. I am Lori Lorenz, Human Energy Engineer and your host for today's episode, Connecting with Happiness. Our guest today is senior happiness superhero, Tom Glazer. He is a life coach, psychologist, and speaker with over 30 years of experience. He brings his passion for helping people live their best lives to counseling individuals or groups, hosting podcasts, and teaching. Welcome, Tom. Thanks for having me, Lori. Good to be here. Well, you bring me happiness just showing up. So that's (laughs) a good place to start. So, you you know, I've gotten the the pleasure of working with you a little bit on other, you know, events, things like that. And I got really excited when I heard about this happiness project. And I was going, hmm, there's a story behind the story. Yes. So, Tom, what is your superhero? All superheroes have origin stories. Right. So tell me, what is your story? Well, um, you know, some people might think it ironic or, or, you know, there's a paradoxical nature going on here, right? I had my dream job. I used to love to go to work almost every morning. I couldn't wait to get up and get to this job. I was a counselor at a college. And I got to both do the individual counseling and psychotherapy that I adore and have been trained for. And I got to teach. So like two of my favorite activities, I got to pay, uh, I got to be paid for Mm -hmm. to do. Um, And so everything was great for seven years. I was going to retire at this job. I was really attached. And um, suddenly um, a toxic coworker showed up and things changed dramatically. And um, I tried and tried and tried to make it work with this person, Lori, and nothing I did worked. I hung on for about two or three more years, but, and I was just getting miserable. And um, I finally decided I couldn't do my dream job anymore, so I quit. And in the midst of my grief over giving up this joy, I noticed really happy people all around me, from the person who officed next to me in my private practice, to somebody I was in a play with, to the guy who cuts my hair, Warren. And I just started noticing, what are they doing that I'm not doing? And then I got braver and I started asking them questions. Then I got even more brave and I asked them more questions. And it sort of just, just snowballed into this videotape project. It started as a, um, a mini documentary series. And um, those are on my website. You can see those, fullheartliving.com. Um, And the first day of filming was one of the happiest days of my own life. So think about it. I'm sitting here talking with happy people, really happy people about what makes them tick. And um, it was one of the happiest days of my own life. And I had known for years I was going to write a book. But I didn't know what it was going to be about until a break on that first day of filming where I go, oh, this is what I want to write a book about. Because I could do this day in and day out. It brings me joy. And that's part of the point of my whole book and video project is that um, we all know really happy people and being in their presence and talking about it, you know, make, it's contagious. We, we all get happier when we do such things. Oh, I, you know, that really resonates because when you do trip across that happy person, you start smiling and you can't help yourself. And the babies who are, terribly happy and are flirting with you with their little grins, you know, they're, yeah. they pay attention to me and you just can't help but smile back. Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Great example. And I really admire that you took that, you know, situation and you found your way through it and yeah. you found the happiness and you did something about it. You yeah. didn't just say, okay, I'm happy. Check. Moving on. <laughs> no, you said there's more to this. I need to bring this to people. Yes. And I can see how you empower positive change by just pointing it out. It's like, oh, look, here's some happiness. Yeah, exactly. It, it's, yes, that, that's one of the keys right there, isn't it? Just waking up, mm-hmm. noticing, not just letting it pass, which I love that you're pointing this out. Absolutely. That's the, that's the mindfulness piece. It is. And once you can notice it, 
and say, I want more of that, you know, order up, you know, give me a, another helping, please. <laughs> you start looking for it, right? And you'll start noticing more. Yeah. But you didn't even just say, okay, here is what it looks like. You did something more, right? You well, actually found a way to get people really engaged. Can you tell me more about that? Well, and the, the piece that I love here is that, that part of what you're pointing out is that I found a way to bring this to others. Mm -hmm. That's a huge key to happiness too, is being of service to others. Huge huge, huge. And I also want to point out that it's, it wasn't just about being, it's, it's not the Pollyanna thing, right? This is not just, it's not ignoring all the negativity in the world and in our lives or in ourselves. It's, it's, that's why I chose the title I did, Full Heart Living, Conversations with the Happiest People I Know. Full Heart Living, that's the whole heart. So I was depressed. I was down. I didn't gloss over that. I had a lot to grieve. Happier people do that. They honor the whole truth. And then that's, that's a springboard for allowing more happiness in. Less happy people suppress and stuff the down emotions because they don't want to feel them, which I understand. I don't blame them. They haven't been taught how to just gently kind of live with it, let it be. But once we can let it be, then, like I said a minute ago, it's a springboard. It, it allows us to open more fully, again, using that full heart. And again, I know listeners can't see, but of course, as I talk about the heart, I put both hands over my heart. I can't help it. <laughs> I talk with my hands. <laughs> nice. And also in your book, you have exercises, right? It's not just read this and uh, yes, you get hope, but to get change, you really need to be engaged. So can yeah. you tell me more about how your book gets people engaged yeah. with that happiness? Yeah. I will tell you, this part of the book kind of goes against the grain for me. It was not my original intention because I'm, I'm trained first as a psychologist. So I was, and I was really young when I went through that training and they tell us, don't tell people what to do. So that message went really deep inside my brain. And there's a place for that, right? In psychotherapy, we want to help people discover their own truth and their own ideas. We want their brains to become engaged and we don't want to interrupt the flow by giving them ideas too soon. So, so there's, there's wisdom in that. I still use that all the time. And in this format, writing a book, my first book, early readers were saying, we love this material, Tom, but, but we need more concrete ideas. We need you to tell us how to implement your ideas in our own lives. So um, I ended up at, and this took, this was one of the hardest parts of the book for me, because like I say, it goes against the grain. I had to really dig deep. And um, so most chapters end with three or four or more pages of workbook activities for how to implement the idea. So there are 20 chapters, Lori. There's a ton of um, themes. Um, and it's things like self-care and taking risks um uh, really being authentic honoring who you are and then so each chapter ends with specific ideas of how you do that but what i want to say is the top learnings are that happier people connect more deeply with other people first of all they have they have tribes they have people that they adore that they love and that they feel loved by that's number one Number two, happier people connect with themselves. So this is the mindfulness piece we were talking about a minute ago. Mm -hmm. Also that authenticity, knowing who we are, honoring our preferences, honoring our tendencies. Um, happier people connect very deeply with their passions. They do things that they adore and they do a ton of them. So those are the top three, connecting with others, self, passions. When you do all three of those things in the service of others, which we also touched on a minute ago, Boy, that's, I call that the holy grail of happiness. That's when people come alive, when we're, when we're connecting with ourselves, we're connecting with others, we're doing things we adore, and they're helping other people, look out. That's, if there's a prescription for happiness, that's what I've discovered, that's it right Wow, there. that sounds very transformative. Yes, yes. Because any one of those things, if you, you're not doing them just right now, you kind of poke your little head out of that gopher hole and go, where'd everybody go? And in our case, 
yes, we're separate right now because of a quarantine that's going on, yes. but we're also more together than we've ever been. Yes, so we're physically more separated. <laughs> yes, I saw that note. Uh, can social you know, distancing just be physical distancing? Yeah, let's call it what it is. It's it is. Distancing. It's, this, you know, we're having a culture shift. Yes. And we get to choose. So I want to choose happiness. Yes, yes, yes. I think so. If I, you know, I'm driving down the road, I go left or I go right. Well, I want to go the scenic route. Yeah. <laughs> that was a fine tradition in my family is we would go on a drive yeah. and go the scenic route and just look at the cool stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when I had kids, I went, I have a tradition. I want to continue this tradition. And I took them on a ride because they were all, you know, bouncing off the walls. And I said, let's just go for a ride. And they, I have three kids. Yeah. They badgered me. These were like, they were all, you know, under the age of 10, right? And they're saying, mom, where are we going? They couldn't just ride in the car. They had to have a destination because everything up to that point had been we're going to somewhere right? Yeah, right it wasn't just hanging out enjoying the journey and so forth and i said all right we're going to pick a destination but it doesn't really matter and of course i could see him shaking a little bit <laughs> we're going to a park to play are you good yay <laughs> so as soon as they had a destination, they could calm down and then look out the window and go, oh, look at the squirrel, you know, but until they had that piece to connect to, they couldn't take a breath yes. and enjoy the moment. So yes. here, by giving people directions saying, hey, we're going to the park, or here are some things you could implement, they say, oh, okay, now I know what I'm supposed to be doing. I have context, right? Now I can enjoy yes. where I am. So I could see this as getting people a little bit out of their comfort zone. Yes. But still giving them, you know, something to hang their hat on. So. Exactly. Exactly. So thank you. Now, that's, op that's the place where we have optimal human performance, right? Mm -hmm. Where there's enough, just enough comfort and just enough challenge. We, we need both. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. And uh, as a side note to that story, we ended up knowing where every park was within a 25 mile radius of our house. <laughs> you remember which had the best swings and teeter totters. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And the best puddles for stomping in. There's always mm -hmm. that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now in your book, full um, heart living, right? Full heart living. Yeah. Yes. I noticed that it was an Amazon bestseller. Very cool. Yep. Yep. Thank and you. People can get more involved on your website, fullheartliving.com. Yep. Uh, but there was one piece we were talking about that was kind of interesting. It was the conversation spark. Yeah. Tell me more about that. Yeah. So when I was initially doing public speaking gigs based on my book, when it first came out, I, of course, was hoping to inspire people to connect more deeply with themselves and other people. So that's how, how I would end my talk with an invitation like that. I hope I've inspired you to connect more deeply. And people would look at me like a deer in the headlights, right? Okay. They didn't, even though I just talked about it for 45 minutes or an hour, it wasn't enough. And so I very quickly realized I need to give people a, an activity to help them either remember or discover how to connect more deeply. So mm -hmm. now when I go out uh, and, and you and I, you agreed to bravely uh, engage in this activity. So I'm going to give you, give you a conversation prompt. And I'm going to listen really deeply in a structured way. I'm going to be listening for themes and values as you respond. And I'm going to provide feedback in a structured way after you've taken a couple minutes to respond to my prompt based on what I hear as your themes and values. And we're gonna, both you and I, as we do this, are gonna notice how connected to ourselves and to the other person do we feel. And I invite listeners to do this as we go too. How connected do you feel to yourself, listener, and to us as we go through this activity? So clear enough what we're doing? I'll just start with the prompt. I'm excited, let's go. <laughs> See, you're a risk taker, you're the, and that's, uh -huh. that's happiness, right? Not too much, you're not jumping off a uh -huh. cliff here. No, uh, I, and I'm not quite fond of white water rafting, but 
I like to uh, meet people I have never met before and have conversations yeah. to find common ground. And that um, is why I'm an outlier in the whole idea of the bell curve with the little tails of just a yeah. few people. Yeah. Uh, I'm the extrovert and a long line of family of introverts. Yes. So whenever someone needs to talk to a stranger, they send me. <laughs> <laughs> and then they just sit back and watch the carnage <laughs> but anyway so let, let's find out what the okay. conversation spark is I, your conversation I spark Lori yes. is, talk about a time you felt the most alive and why Ooh, a time that I felt the most alive and why hmm uh, I'm, I like that question because this has happened to me many, many times in my life. So I enjoy the fact that I get into this, what I call the zone of being present and feeling what I call a perfect moment. And I get that little tear in my eye, you know, of just spiritual joy when I know I'm in that zone. And it has happened often, like when my first child was born. The sun was coming in through the uh, hospital windows, and there was this precious bundle. My life changed. That, that was amazing. And there's this kind of little hallmark of other of these little perfect moments. And one a little less, you know, life-changing, but altogether important, was when uh, I'm an information technology professional, do computer stuff, right? And that can be a little bit of a toxic environment um, because being a woman and the only one often in the field, in wherever I worked, I would run into some resistance. So I finally found a place uh, at an insurance company working in a corporate audit department. And it was the most fun ever. Who would have thought that audit was the most fun ever? But these people said, thank you. I was in a meeting and I said, I fixed it for you guys. Guess what? When you go to South uh, Streets of Chicago and to the dangerous neighborhoods, this was a long time ago, um, you can take a photo with this digital camera I bought for you, take a photo of the materials you have to record and it will take you two minutes and it's light enough you can run away. <laughs> And I got a standing ovation in the meeting and a wave. You know how they all take turns standing up and raising their arms? And they did a wave for me in this meeting because I saved their bacon <laughs> with the little camera. And I went, oh, that was, oh, that was amazing, right? Mm. And then I have found this with other real sparks of joy uh, to me is collaboration. So when I'm working around the kitchen table with all my crew, my, the folks I've raised, you know, trained since they were 14, being friends with my kids, I teach them how to do web business, I teach them how to invoice, and they work for me, and everything's clicking, and they're all happy, and trading stuff off, and, and everything else, and it just warms my heart, because they've helped me, and I've helped them grow, and in fact, a lot of them got jobs because I trained them how to do all this stuff. And the last example, which is the podcast I'm doing right now is I See Hope. There's all these stories, Laura, you can't stop now. <laughs> but my favorite one is Magic Pie. I bake. So for, for me to share joy with others when I don't know if they're on that frequency or they get it, I bake. So I will either bring them cookies or I will make pie because that's what my grandmother taught me to do. I'm the pie maker in the family. And it's easy for me, right? Uh, everybody else goes, how did you do that? Did you buy these from a store? I went, excuse me, no, I did not buy these from a store. Well, how'd you do that? I said, well, it's a knack. It's easy for me, right? And other people will value it even more than I do because it's not easy for them. But I put love into my stuff, and I think that's what makes it easy. So here I am sharing my joy with people because a lowest common denominator is a cookie. <laughs> okay, so those stories kind of have a wide range, but yes. to me, the thread is 
Well, let me, don't, don't tell no, us. No, don't I won't tell you. You, you figure it out now. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Decoding commence. All right. <laughs> and, and you can, um, of course, add in. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm taking a deep breath. So to me. So again, I was listening for themes mm -hmm. and values. So what I'm trying to do is kind of distill the essence of what I heard mm -hmm. from you. Uh, into a word or a sentence or phrase. And uh, what I heard was, and, and there's often overlap, by the way, of theme and value. What To me, this the teamwork, mm -hmm. really important to you. This is about, um, these stories were about groups and making a difference. That being, and, 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 and recognition is really important to you. Um, and contributing positively is really important to you. And um, the first story, when your son, I think it was your son, it was a child, I think it was just- Yes, yeah, son my son, my older. oldest. Mm -hmm. That one was a little different. That one was more about really being in the present moment, I felt like, and sensual. There's a lot of the senses were there, the sun coming in. So that one was like really being awake and alive, I mm -hmm. thought. So mm -hmm. again, theme and value. You, so what, did I miss anything? Let's see. Um, I think that present moment piece, it, that was the indicator to me, that very first pow, yeah. you know, oh, that was intense joy. That yeah. was like, oh, okay, that's what I've been missing at, you know, the tear in the eye. So that was my that's, measuring stick. That yeah. was my sensor, as it were, as a okay. science head, right? Yeah. Uh, the the joy radar was pinging going, do I hear anything? Do I hear anything? <laughs> <laughs> So that could be your the value piece because your values are what kind of connect you to what's going on and that resonate. Yeah. And then the themes were the situations that it was more likely the I would get a ping of joy, right? Yes. And that was definitely with collaboration. And let me and, ask you, how connected to yourself and to me did you feel when you were recounting these and having me listen? Well, the fact that I can see you, you guys, I have an unfair advantage. I have the Zoom call, so I can tell when, when Tom was getting it, you know, he, he starts smiling even wider and going, ah, oh, I know what you're talking about. And I, I see someone nodding your head. And, and that's one of the reasons why I love to tell stories is I can tell when people, they make eye contact and they go, oh, so I get it. You see that light going off. Yes. Yeah. And, and even when, you know, one of these theme events happen, you know, I kind of stop, I put my hands over my heart and I yeah. have that little teary look and then the, the kids look at me and go, oh, she's doing it again. <laughs> <laughs> I, and I just tell, I'm so happy. I love you guys. You know, and they get, get used to it. They're not embarrassed anymore. They know it's just going to happen. So, <laughs> but I tell them why I'm all teary eyed and everything because, you know, I, it's often been difficult for me to, to, resonate with my own emotions. I can tell when everybody else is responding to me and that's how I can tell what I'm showing, right? What's reciprocal, um, absolutely. That's part of the utility of this exercise. It's yes, reciprocal. so this is, this is very good. Um, I like the fact that you heard that I like to make a difference. Yes. And telling you the scenario other than, hey, I got a wave at the meeting, right? why did you get a wave at the meeting? This made me dig a little deeper to say, why did this yeah. happen? Yes. And uh, teamwork, collaboration is always something. Delivering a baby is a collaboration between all the doctors, the nurses, the yeah. anesthesiologists, everybody else. So yeah. if I look back again, another layer down, right. I start seeing that. Right. And I actively seek out collaboration. It's like, Hey, Tom, you want to be on a podcast? Yeah. yeah. It's yeah, much more it. fun yeah, when you're here. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll just point out for listeners. So um, notice I didn't speak the whole time you were mm -hmm. talking. I just listened. I, I said maybe one or two mm-hmm. But I was giving nonverbal, which obviously on a podcast, no one else can see. But I was nodding if people mm -hmm. do this uh, exercise. 
outside of here. So, and I really owned my feedback. And that's part of why I was asking, did I miss mm -hmm. anything? Because the truth, I've done this, of course, how many dozens of times now over the years. Um, we all have our own filters. Mm -hmm. So um, it's not that I was wrong, but I, maybe I'm not going to pick up everything, all your themes and all your values. Um, but what I have to offer has merit. That's what I want to let mm -hmm. listeners know. Trust yourself. Trust yourself and offer what you have, and that's enough. But we do want to own it mm -hmm. because I, I don't want to tell anybody this is your value or this is your theme because that can cause even a minor disconnect we don't want. So we want to own it and say this is from what I heard. It's just taking responsibility. That, that just awesome. saw a little bit. I want to thank you for being a good listener. Ah, so welcome. this is a huge skill that people kind of clump into the Pandora's box of soft skills. The you know, mythical box that if I open this box, everything either will be terrible or really good because I know soft skills. Well, people don't always know what a soft skill is. It's just something they don't have and they really want it because that'll make everything better. <laughs> danger, danger, Will Robinson. <laughs> this is not what you think. Um, so here, actively listening, because you had an idea, okay, themes and values, and you ask an open-ended question, and then you listened. And it wasn't just hearing the words, you were uh, also doing a, a little bit of analysis, a little bit of intuition, yeah. and connecting with it, and then doing a follow-up saying, hey, how close was I? Yeah. And that closed the communication loop, yeah. right? This, and this that process. makes me happy. Oh, good, <laughs> it worked, it worked. So this is what I do in my public speaking gigs. I lead people through this activity and it's now available in um, a game form because again, people were saying, this is great. We need more of this. And how can we take this with you? So I created full heart living conversation sparks that people can use as, you know, an after dinner game with the family or take to the cabin with their friends or I don't know, doing an airplane. <laughs> oh, Tom, we have got to talk. I have things for you. <laughs> you know, I build apps, you know. And apps can be games. So we've got to talk. Okay. <laughs> Let's make some happiness happen. There you go. Now you're talking. <laughs> yes. And, the, you know, having answers, people think, oh, this is so hard. I'm taking a test. I'm tough to find the answer. Oh, okay, guys. Let's see if you can come up with a question. Yeah. Really good questions beg an answer. Mm. It's much harder to write the questions than it is to write the answers. Yeah. So you have to do a lot of soul searching and dig in to find that nugget question. So conversation sparks sound amazing. Thank you. Thank you, Lori. Wow. I don't know about you guys, but I, I feel empowered now. I can make some positive changes and really recognize more pieces of my life that fit into the happy category that you may or may not think of. It's like the word adjacent. I'm going to throw something on the table for you. This is my conversation spark for okay. you. Okay. <laughs> uh, when we think of some being on target, it's the bullseye, Yeah. right? Here's the question. We've got happiness. We have the themes and the values, you know, the situations and the awareness and all the stuff. But now what's adjacent to that? How do you know you're on the edge, the boundary of happiness, where that's that transformation, resistance, edgy, push-pull kind of boundary? And when do you know you're there and do you have a strategy or a process to get back into happiness? So does your book address strategies for happiness? Well, like I said, there's 20 chapters. <laughs> Gratitude is one way I forgot to mention earlier. Um, but in terms of this, this question, we're on, we're on the edge. How do we know we're there? I feel like it's, uh, it's back to that mindfulness piece, really being in tune with ourselves. I also talked about that, the optimal human performance 
place where I'm, I'm just comfortable enough and I'm just taking enough risk. Like my body tells me when I'm there. My body tells me uh, if I'm in flow. This is another, like, like the passion piece I was talking about. Happier people are deeply connected th to their passions and they get in that flow. So when I'm in flow, I lose all track of time. I'm just so engaged in the activity. It's, I'm just 100% there. I'm in my body and I'm doing this activity. And um, I'm, I feel like I'm emanating joy. I feel it. And it, again, with that contagion effect, other people um, are affected positively because I'm in joy. So it's not, happiness isn't a selfish thing, by the way. It's not just for me. It is for me, it's, but it's for everybody. I'm part of everybody and all, everybody matters. <laughs> yes, we're all in this together. We're all in this together. And according to a lot of quantum theory and so forth, we're never apart. Exactly. And that's why I think that if we could just drop in a little bit more happiness and you were saying the contagion, that, that's critical mass. You can switch you know, the collective consciousness more to the positive, more to the happiness, the joy as being the default setting, right? Yeah. And, and right now we're, we're doing our best to purge the unhappiness everybody has with change and health. The other thing is um, it doesn't have to be super complicated. It's as simple as um, calling up your friend and voice to voice. So beware social media. We think social media, and why do we, this is another thing. Why do we call it social media? It's really information media, right? All these handy tools we have are super great at helping us get information across. And we think it's helping us connect. And it, it doesn't totally meet the need for true human connection. We really need to hear voices. Yes. Then, then a video our response video mm -hmm. is better video is mm -hmm. good yes good. so this whole you know we're gearing up to do more video over the internet which yeah. is great yeah. and getting it easier for people to use it yeah which is great um <laughs> any small child or cat can get onto a video call we've seen this happen <laughs> <laughs> so that also comes in now a lot of people which switch gears a little bit okay always ask me, well, Lori, do you have any freebies for this episode? And of course, this man has so much stuff to offer. But we're going to just take that first little piece and get your toe in the water. And you have an excerpt from your book. Correct? Yes. The first part of my first chapter is available for free on the homepage of fullheartliving.com. Yep. Just yep. away. And I'm going to make it even easier. I'm going to put yeah. it in the newsletter for I See Hope awesome. so that they can get to it right away. So that will be a oh, free freebie. Yeah, direct link. Perfect. That's Yes, a direct link. Yes. Also, the workbook is available mm -hmm. on fullheartliving.com. The workbook, workbook section, I, I kind of created a whole separate um, just full heart, living or, uh, full heart Living workbook. It's available on fullheartliving.com at the very top. Okay. What I'll do is I'll make a link to that too, so they can get to it quicker. Oh, great. Thank you. And, and we'll see. So it'll be in the newsletter and it's on fullheartliving.com. Yeah. And we'll post a link to the podcast on your Facebook group, Full Heart great. Living. Right? Great. Thank you. Yay. Well, this has been so much fun mm -hmm. and it makes me happy with, you know, having a great conversation. Yes. And, you know, I don't always get to talk to superheroes. So thank you, Tom. <laughs> Pleasure. Takes one to know one, Lori. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Well, I, I'm hoping my superpower will bring me joy and happiness, and I will find out what it is someday. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think you're pretty on track, Lori. <laughs> yes. Well, uh, again, thank you so much. Uh, we've been talking to Tom Glazer with Full Heart Living, and so much more will be coming from Tom. Have a great day, Tom. You too, Lori. Thanks for having me. You have been listening to the I See Hope podcast. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and iHeartRadio. Visit us online at icehope.world, where you can subscribe to our podcast, our newsletter, read blog articles, and so much more. 